Disgusting pathetic loser reincarnates with godly magical powers. A common man opens his eyes, but he looks to be in great agony as tears fall from his eyes. He looks around to see people jeering and laughing at him. A prince decides to give him a parting gift before he takes his life. He asks the commoner to strike out with his magic, and the man desperately tries to attack the prince. He raises his arms to shoot a mighty flame at the prince, but he can only manage a weak flame that hardly causes damage to the prince. Everyone makes fun of his flimsy magic, and the prince can't believe there's a commoner that's so weak. He's disappointed that was all a commoner could manage. He recounts the words of a great sage called William Bordeaux, who said the most important things for a mage are lineage, talent, and intelligence. But he tells the commoner not to get the wrong idea because diligence is a broader prerequisite and no amount of it can make up for a lack of talent. He begins preparing his attack as he tells the commoner that magic will never smile upon someone as insignificant as him. He releases his flame magic on the commoner who is immediately consumed by them. He screams in agony as the flames burn him to ashes and then he immediately begins to smile at the magnificence of a royalty's magic. He realizes the power behind the magic a noble wields and he can't help but admire its beauty from his magical perspective. He wishes he learned more about magic and mastered it while he was alive. With his last breath, he prays for another chance to experience the thrill of such magic. He suddenly wakes up and he sees himself surrounded by maids holding toys. He wonders who they are and where he is. He thinks they are giant enemies and he decides to protect himself. He tries to cast a fire spell to defend himself, but he realizes his hands are quite tiny. He accidentally casts a fire spell which bursts through the roof of the castle as fireworks go off marking his birth. A town cries runs through the kingdom announcing the birth of the seventh prince of the saloon kingdom while sharing posters. Everyone in the village is happy to witness such a great day. Meanwhile the maids at the castle are mind blown by the disaster caused by the newborn baby. The baby smiles cheekily, proud of his handwork in the destruction of the castle. Some years later, the people in the kingdom go about their normal activities while some maids search for the prince in the castle. They search a portion of the castle and can't find him, so they decide to move their search to another portion of the castle. The prince comes out of hiding after they leave, and he's about to sneak away from the castle when he's greeted by two men. Prince Lloyd stops in his tracks, and he shushes the man so the maids don't hear them calling his name. He tells the man to deny seeing him, and the man agrees to keep his secret. He asks Lloyd if he'll like to tag along with them as they go to hunt, but Lloyd leaves him talking to himself. When the man realizes that Lloyd is trying to sneak away, he calls out to him but Lloyd doesn't answer. The man is disappointed that the prince has run off again, but his friend informs him that Lloyd is the seventh prince which makes him out of contention for the crown. He doesn't understand why the man is going through so much effort to gain his favor. The man reminds his friend that the prince was able to speak shortly after his birth, read spell books instead of children's picture books, and also refused breast milk like any gentleman would. He tells his friend he thinks the prince is a reincarnation of the great sage William Bordeaux. His friend tells him it's ridiculous to think the prince is a reincarnation of the great sage. The prince runs down the steps in the castle, and he realizes the man is right about him being a reincarnation. He remembers he was a commoner in his past life, but he doesn't know why his memories are still intact. As the maids look for him in the castle, he wonders why he was reborn as someone privileged to be the seventh son of a royal family. Though he was born as royalty, he doesn't plan to follow their ambitions of glory. He decides to stick to his ambitions from his previous life and find out how much awesome magic can be discovered in the palace. He enters the royal library and he's excited to parse through all the magical books lining the shelves. He's amazed by the library's collection because it surpassed that of the magic academy in his previous life. He takes a book off the shelf and opens it up, but someone immediately appears behind him. Silpha takes the book from his hands, pissed to find him after he ran away from the maids. They engage in swordplay and Lloyd is able to hold his own against her for a while, but she eventually pushes him back. He tells her he doesn't have a shot at the throne since he's the seventh, hence he doesn't need sword instructions. Silpha tells him there's more to life than succession to the throne. She reminds him that he has to be familiar with handling a sword as a member of the royal family. It was her purpose in life to make him adept with the sword after she was placed in charge of his education three years ago. Lloyd realizes that Silpha won't let him stop training unless he puts up a good show. They decide to resume their sword practice and Silpha realizes that Lloyd was getting stronger with each passing day. Lloyd wasn't bothered by her compliment because he knew she was holding back. He was also secretly using control-type magic to trace Silpha's movements, so she was battling a mirror image of herself. He was basically cheating so he could get out of practice and go back to his books. 
they continue sparring but Silpha still gets the best out of him. Lloyd realizes that though Silpha still surpassed him in arm strength, stamina, and height, though he could copy her techniques, he was still at a disadvantage against her, which would make him lose. He decides to experiment cheating to compensate for his disadvantages against her. He uses magic to increase his sword length and his physical strength. He also uses levitation to make up for the height difference. He re-engaged Silpha and this time he's able to keep up with her. He's confident he'll be able to win with his magic enhancements. They continue their sword practice, but Lloyd decides to use his trump card to make an unexpected move. He releases his trace magic which mirrors Silpha's movements and he tries to strike her from behind. Silpha looks surprised and Lloyd is happy. He'll be able to get back to his book, but Silpha blocks his attack. She wonders if he was cheating which catches him by surprise, and she's able to knock his sword out of his hands. She's surprised he thought she wouldn't notice his cheating schemes. She tells him he's so talented for trying to make up for his disadvantages. She's surprised he was able to use two spells at once, which most court magicians can't even manage. She tells him not to rush his growth, but to grow at his own pace. Lloyd realizes she didn't notice his physical enhancement and his control spells because he was actually using four spells at once. He decides to keep this information from her so she doesn't suss him out. Silpha takes him to the maid bath, but Lloyd protests, telling her he can bathe himself. Silpha doesn't want to let him out of her sight because she'll only find him under a pile of books. Lloyd is disappointed. He doesn't get to read his book. But the other maids tell him the library demon will gobble him up if he remains stubborn. Lloyd is surprised, there's a library with a forbidden demon. The maids recount the tale of the demon named Grimoire, who also destroyed the kingdom a long time ago. It took several sages to seal the demon away in a book. Silpha thinks the story is a fairy tale, because she can't believe there's a book in the castle's underground library where the monster is sealed. Silpha doesn't think Lloyd will be scared by such a tale, but she's surprised to see him trembling. The maids offer to sleep with him through the night, but Silpha tells them she's the only one that can perform that role. An argument ensues between the maids and Lloyd uses that opportunity to sneak away. The idea of a forbidden underground library in the castle makes his eyes sparkle with anticipation. Lloyd goes underground, and he uses a concealment spell to get through the guards guarding the entrance. The guards argue about the authenticity of the tale behind the library as Lloyd sneaks past them. They're convinced no one will be able to sneak past them and break the seal cast by the ten most powerful mages the kingdom has ever seen. Lloyd arrives at the barrier and he breaks the seal easily. He enters into the library and he can't believe he never knew such an exciting section existed underground. He moves through the library checking out the books and he reminds himself to put up the barrier when he's leaving. He settles down with a book when another book suddenly starts levitating which surprises Lloyd. A demon emerges from the book and he tells Lloyd he's impressed he was able to break the seal. Lloyd wonders who the demon is and the demon introduces himself as Grimoire and Lloyd figures out that he's the demon of the forbidden book. Lloyd introduces himself to Grimoire and Grimoire tries to convince Lloyd to free him. He tells Lloyd his seal is already degraded and he'll eventually be free. He offers to give Lloyd as much gold as he wants if he frees him, but Lloyd isn't impressed with the demon's creation magic. He's disappointed Grimoire just molded some dust into gold, and he crushes the gold back into dust easily which surprises Grimoire. Lloyd tells him he plans to replace his seal because he doesn't want a demon to destroy his plans of learning the magic of the kingdom. Grimoire tries to convince him that he has no beef with the citizens because the sages who sealed are long gone, but Lloyd doesn't believe him. Grimoire becomes desperate, and he offers to teach Lloyd some ancient magic, which has been lost to time. This piques Lloyd's interest and Grimoire tells him he will teach him because he can see he has a lot of magic talent. Lloyd remembers the words of the prince who said magic would never smile on him because he's a commoner. He's now convinced he has a body more privileged in magic than a mere commoner. He decides to release the demon's seal, and the demon can't believe his luck. Lloyd anticipates the teachings of the demon, and the demon decides to keep his word. He immediately strikes Lloyd with an ancient flame magic, and he decides to move on with his escape, thinking he has taken Lloyd down. He's surprised to see Lloyd safe and sound because he uses a barrier to protect himself. Lloyd is intrigued by the spell cast by the demon, and he asks the demon to show him more. The demon is pissed by this, and he hits Lloyd with more powerful ancient magic spells, but none of them can penetrate through Lloyd's barrier. The demon is baffled by this, and he wonders what Lloyd's barrier is made of. Lloyd is so fascinated by the magic that he decides to try it for himself. 
He takes the remnants on his barrier, and he holds it on finger so he can observe its composition. He excitedly awaits what more Grimoire can offer, when suddenly Grimoire grows a second mouth and starts chanting. Lloyd notices his double incantation to release a devastating ancient spell. Lloyd analyzes the spell from within his barrier, but Grimoire can't believe Lloyd is still alive after being on the receiving end of his most powerful spell. Grimoire decides to put his tail between his legs and run for his life, but he's stopped by a barrier. Lloyd informs him that he put up a barrier, but Grimoire is hurt that Lloyd thought he was trying to run away. He tells Grimoire he just put up the barriers as a preventive measure. Grimoire had had enough with Lloyd, so he decides to finish him off, but Lloyd tells him he already knows his spell. Lloyd decides to test Grimoire's defensive magic, and he casts a huge spell. Grimoire can't believe Lloyd has such a huge mana reservoir. He tries to dodge the fire spell, but he's inevitably burnt to a crisp. Lloyd wonders why Grimoire wasn't able to dodge his attack, and Grimoire can't believe he's so arrogant. Lloyd decides to repair the damage to the library, and Grimoire is dumbfounded because he was able to restore the room so perfectly. He decides to treat Lloyd with respect since he's so amazing. Lloyd knows that demons can't be taken out with magic, so he decides to test Grimoire's limits, but Grimoire moves away from him with dread. He decides to surrender himself and pledge his services to Lloyd. He asks to serve as Lloyd's familiar, and Lloyd immediately agrees, but Grimoire feels like Lloyd sees him as a lab rat. Lloyd tells him he stands out too much, and he asks him to transform into something smaller. Grimoire transforms into a little cute demon with the aim of buttering Lloyd up, so he can take him down unawares. Lloyd invites him to jump into his coat, and Grimoire can't believe Lloyd is so stupid that he'll let him get intimate. He decides to use the opportunity to attach himself to Lloyd and take over his body, but as soon as he touches Lloyd, he's surprised by how dense Lloyd's mana is. He decides to be obedient to Lloyd because he can't see himself taking control of him. Lloyd uses the opportunity to read all the books in the Forbidden Library. Albert gets dressed for the day, and he proceeds to the library with the servants prostrating to him. Lloyd is reading some books in the library with Grimoire, keeping him company when Albert arrives at the door. Grimoire alerts Lloyd of Albert's presence as he opens the door and Lloyd tells him to hide. Albert walks into the room and Lloyd is so excited to see him that he raises his head too fast, which makes the book on his head fly into Albert's hand. Lloyd sits and watches enthusiastically as Albert's prepares to practice at the testing range. He uses his fire magic to take down a target to the amazement of the spectators. Lloyd applauds his effort while Grimoire can't believe he gets to witness the second prince of the kingdom in action. Lloyd informs him that Albert is so smart and physically capable that people refer to him as the next potential king. This gives him authority to access various facilities in the castle, and Lloyd is always happy when Albert invites him to tag along because that's the only time he's allowed to use his magic. Lloyd gets off the bench and Albert informs him that it's his turn to have a go at the practice range. Lloyd walks over to the line, but he realizes that he shouldn't look so impressive so people won't think he's in contention for the throne. All he wants to do is study magic without drawing anyone's attention to him. He decides to make his fireball graze all the targets instead of hitting them squarely, but Grimoire tells him people will notice that it is harder to pull off. Lloyd decides to stick to his idea, and he makes his fireballs graze the targets. Everyone applauds his effort, but one of them teases him for only being able to graze the target. Grimoire is pissed by this because he knows it's harder to make the fireballs graze the target. Meanwhile Lloyd is accessing the pros and cons of his technique and Grimoire realizes he's addicted to magic knowledge. Albert decides to take a break, and he leaves Lloyd at the practice range to let loose. The servants follow Albert, which makes Lloyd delighted to have the whole gallery to himself. He decides to try out so many ideas that he has been holding in. Grimoire wonders what he'll try and Lloyd tells him he's going to try out his double incantation magic. Grimoire tries to deter him because only demons can do the double incantation trick since they have two mouths. Lloyd decides to absorb Grimoire into his hand, but he's surprised it worked. Grimoire doesn't feel comfortable being assimilated into Lloyd's body. Lloyd decides to try and sync up with him so they can cast an advanced fire spell. Lloyd wonders if Grimoire can cast it, and Grimoire reminds him that advanced spells are child's play to him because he's a demon. Lloyd realizes he'll be able to cast it, and they begin casting it together. They barely say the full incantation before Grimoire gets sick. Lloyd wonders what's wrong with him and Grimoire tells him he should be the one questioning his actions. He wonders what incantation Lloyd is saying and Lloyd tells him it was a spell stack. 
Spell stacking is a way of abbreviating spells that require incantations to reduce their cast time. He explains to Grimoire that he was trying to cast a hundred spells at once using that methodology. Grimoire is surprised by this because spell stacking doesn't work that way. He reminds Lloyd that a single spell stack can only comprise a maximum of three spells at once. Lloyd is bummed out because it would take an eternity to cast the incantation of the spell he wants. Lloyd decides to take over Grimoire's mouth on his palm, but he also tries out his own to make sure he can talk through both at the same time. Grimoire wonders if he's about to try out two advanced spell incantations at the same time, but Lloyd shuts him up because he needs his mouth. He begins casting the incantation while Grimoire wonders how he's able to cast two different advanced spells at the same time. He realizes that Lloyd is folding two forms of magic, and he's impressed by Lloyd's mana reserve. Grimoire keeps observing Lloyd as he does the double incantation, but he realizes the spell will be too powerful to point at anything, let alone a target. Lloyd finishes casting the incantation and a powerful beam is cast upwards. The beam is so powerful that it catches the attention of everyone in the kingdom. Prince Albert's attendants wonder why he gives Lloyd so much attention and Albert realizes they don't have an eye for talent. He tells them that Lloyd made his fireball graze all the targets in the same way intentionally which makes him a magic protege. He tells them Lloyd could become a great sage one day which will make him a vital asset to his future. The attendants aren't surprised he wants a great sage in his service since he could be the king in the future. Albert tells them he just wants to get along with his little brother. He tells them his brother should have taken down the targets in the training room by now but his attendant tells him he's over-exaggerating. He looks out the window and he sees the sky is dark. He wonders why the sun is already setting at noon. Meanwhile, Grimoire is shaking in his books, in their case his hands, as he looks at the result of Lloyd's spell. He's surprised his spell blew a hole in the sky to change it from noon to night. Lloyd marvels in his work before he realizes what he has done. He hastily dispels his spell so the sky can return to normal. Grimoire wonders what Lloyd is made of while Lloyd is glad he was able to revert his spell. The next day, Grimoire picks up the daily papers and he reads the story about the blast in the sky made by Lloyd. He informs Lloyd about the story but another story catches his eyes. He tells Grimoire about the story of a ranked adventuring companies clearing difficult dungeons and collecting treasures. He's enchanted by the treasure the adventurers get and he decides to head out to a dungeon. He begins walking like a hypnotized zombie whole Grimoire does his best to stop him to no avail. Grimoire tells him everyone in the castle will freak out if he goes missing but Lloyd tells him there's nothing a little magic can't solve. He shows Grimoire an acorn and he uses a plant class spell to form a replica of himself. Grimoire is impressed by this but Lloyd decides to flex more and show Grimoire how sophisticated the replica is. Grimoire is convinced Lloyd will be able to slip out of the castle since he has such a good replica. Lloyd tells him his issue with using the replica is fooling Silpha. He remembers when she told him he grew by Zo 7mm which surprised him. Grimoire is also surprised by how attentive she is and Lloyd tells him he won't be able to fool her with a replica that dances like a dummy. He decides to make Grimoire inhabit the replica while he leaves the castle. He successfully escapes the castle and he decides to play a call across to Grimoire. For some reason his magical call requires a phone signal, but let's not talk about that. He asks Grimoire how things are looking on his end and Grimoire tells him he's doing his best to represent him. The maids stare at Lloyd through the door surprised that he's paying attention to his looks for the first time. Grimoire realizes that Lloyd's idea to transfer his consciousness to his replica was ingenious. Lloyd tells him to watch out for Silpha while doing his best impression of him. Grimoire checks out the replica he's inhabiting and he's surprised that it has mana circulation. He immediately gets an idea and he realizes that he can do whatever he wants now that Lloyd is out of the picture. He smiles like a maniac as he thinks about all the things he can do. Lloyd suddenly calls out to him and tells him he's counting on him to do his best. Grimoire is so touched by this that he's too stunned to speak. Lloyd calls out to him again and Grimoire tells him that he'll do his best till he gets back. Lloyd keeps flying but he looks around and he stops. Though he was able to leave the castle without trouble, he realizes that he has no idea where to find a dungeon. He stays levitating, trying to think about his next move when he suddenly notices some movement on the ground. A lady is being chased by some orcs and Grimoire informs him that someone is in danger. The lady suddenly stops and she turns around to face the orcs. She takes them down easily under seconds and Lloyd realizes she's a martial artist from her battle style. He notices her breathing technique and he's impressed by it. 
the lady stands triumphantly over the orcs, and she tells them to try their luck again in another hundred years. Lloyd remembers a book that talked about people in foreign countries who channel their inner energy called Kai to create incredible techniques. The lady notices Lloyd hiding from her, and she calls out to him. Lloyd is surprised she was able to notice him from such a far distance, but he decides to meet her and ask her about her techniques and dungeons. Grimoire tells him that the lady may recognize him as the seventh prince if he goes out to meet her. Since the lady doesn't get a response from Lloyd, she decides to take him as her enemy. She rushes at him to attack him, but Lloyd hastily changes his appearance. She comes up to Lloyd and he introduces himself as Robert, a rookie adventurer. He created an illusion from a mixture of his image and his brother's image to create an authentic appearance. The lady introduces herself to him as Tao, a B-rank adventurer and a martial artist. Lloyd wonders if she suspects his disguise, but Grimoire tells him the illusion is perfect. Meanwhile, Tao is falling head over heels for Robert because no male has paid her any attention since she left her dojo. She was glad she finally found someone interesting, and she decided to make Lloyd her boyfriend even if hell has to freeze over. Lloyd tells her he wanted them to explore a dungeon together, but if she doesn't feel like it, he'll find someone else. She immediately tells him they can explore a dungeon together, and they head over to a dungeon entrance immediately. They enter the dungeon and Tao takes down several monsters trying to impress Lloyd, but he's more interested in the glowing rocks scattered all over the cave floor. Tao must have felt bad that a male was more interested in smooth rocks than he was in her. They move deeper into the cave and Lloyd wonders why Tao is adventuring alone, and she tells him she hasn't found suitable comrades yet. They take a break inside the dungeon to prepare some refreshments, and Lloyd asks her about her Kai technique. Tao is surprised he knows about Kai since not many people know about the technique on his continent. He tells her that Kai is just like mana for sorcerers, and he also tells her he noticed her breathing technique. She tells him that the breathing technique is fundamental to Kai mastery, which allows a human to gain explosive power. She tells him that it takes time to hone breathing techniques, but she looks at him, surprised to see that he's practicing the breathing technique. He suddenly chokes and Tao tells him he can't practice the breathing techniques carelessly because he could hurt himself. Lloyd noticed that he felt an energy force different from his mana, and he realizes he can use the energy to increase his magic power. Tao decides to teach him more about the Kai technique, and he thanks her for the free tutelage. Her heart suddenly skips a beat, but she sternly tells Lloyd to keep up his breathing technique to hide her reaction. Grimoire can't believe that Lloyd cares about nothing other than learning magic. He's about to have some desert when Silpha suddenly shows up behind him which surprises him. Tao demonstrates a Kai blast to Lloyd as she takes down a grey wolf, which she thinks is the boss of the dungeon. She tells him they can now open the chest of the dungeon, but she warns him that the treasure may be underdeveloped because the dungeon isn't high level. Lloyd is intrigued by the system of the dungeon and Tao notices this. They approach the chest and Tao notices that Lloyd has almost fully mastered the breathing technique. She's glad she got herself a keeper, and she's sure even her strict grandpa would approve of Lloyd. She decides to do her best to make sure that Lloyd remains by her side, but Lloyd is more interested in the opening of the chest than her delusive thoughts. Tao opens the chest, and she's almost sliced in half by an energy blade, but Lloyd saves her as the blade cuts through the dungeon floor where she was standing a moment before. A lick rises up menacingly from beneath the chest which surprises Tao, but Lloyd is hyped to face a new boss as he eyes glow with anticipation. The lick stands tall before Tao and Lloyd, but Lloyd isn't familiar with the monster, so he asks Tao about it. Tao tells him he has nothing to worry about, and she tries to convince him to head out, but Lloyd is bent on watching her defeat the monster. Tao suddenly uses her technique to blast Lloyd out of the cave. She's convinced that the blast will take him to the entrance, and she hopes he doesn't break too many bones on the way. The lick suddenly starts attacking her, but she manages to dodge its attacks. She wonders why a high-level monster is dwelling in a low-level cave. She realizes that the lick will be difficult to deal with so much, so that even an rank adventurer would have a hard time. She decides to buy as much time as possible so that Lloyd can return to the entrance of the dungeon safely. Lloyd is flying through the, propelled by the energy of the blast. He's adamant about leaving the dungeon because he wants to learn more about Kai. He decides to create a barrier around him which reduces his momentum from the blast. He eventually comes to a stop, sadly cursing two little goblins on the dungeon floor with his barrier. Lloyd wonders if it'll be right for him to go back since he doesn't know why Tao decided to send him away. He asks Grimoire for his opinion, but he doesn't get any response. He thinks he has gone out of range of their magic link, but Grimoire suddenly answers him in a small voice, begging him to return as soon as possible. Grimoire begs him for help and Lloyd contemplates leaving the dungeon after all. Tao is still facing the lick, but she's barely hanging on. 
She realizes that there's no way she'll win the battle against the Lick, so she decides to back off slowly before the Lick notices. The Lick suddenly realizes she's using Kai, and he informs her that he previously consumed someone who used the technique. He tells her that Kai techniques are nothing but an inferior form of sorcery. By consuming adventurers, he was able to gain their skills and knowledge, but he tells Tao she's not worth consuming. The Lick is more interested in Lloyd because he can react fast enough to dodge his attack. She realizes that though Lloyd and the Lick are both pursuers of knowledge, they are nothing alike. She's happy that, unlike most people, Lloyd could see the importance of Kai and the potential power of the techniques it generates. She decides to use her breathing technique and she attacks the Lick, but it creates a barrier that blocks her attack. Tao tries her best to break the barrier with her techniques because she has trained so hard since she was a little kid. She sacrificed her time and freedom just to master the technique, and she wasn't going to let the Lick make a mockery of her abilities. She uses everything she has, and she punches a hole through the barrier. She releases an energy beam that hits the Lick, and she's convinced she was able to defeat it. Tao is exhausted because she used up too much of her energy and put everything into a point-blank Kai blast. She falls on her knees unable to move a muscle, but the Lick suddenly speaks up levitating over her. He is disappointed that she used up all her energy just to break a flimsy barrier that he put up. He informs her that her life is worthless because he has a spell which surpasses the most powerful energy she can generate after her years of practicing Kai techniques. The Lick casts the spell, but he's shocked to see the spell breaking apart. The spell is dispelled and the Lick is surprised to see Lloyd standing beside Tao, protecting her with a barrier. Lloyd is disappointed that Tao gave up already, but he tells her he'll take care of the Lick. Though he's in a hurry, he decides to have some fun. The Lick is saying an incantation, but Lloyd suddenly drifts through the air like a wisp of smoke, and he manifests behind the Lick. He uses a Kai breathing technique, but the Lick is surprised because he didn't notice Lloyd saying the incantation. While Lloyd thinks about how to combine Kai and magic techniques effectively, the Lick tries to attack him continuously, but Lloyd's barrier is impenetrable. The Lick can't believe how sturdy Lloyd's barrier is. Lloyd remembers Tao's advice about using Kai techniques, and he decides to focus on his breathing. He inhales deeper than he's ever done, and he uses a sprint spell to accelerate the process. Lloyd moves through the cave, trying to take in as much air as possible, and the Lick mistakes his actions as a plan to escape. He tries to attack Lloyd, but his attacks are still useless against Lloyd's barrier. Lloyd keeps practicing his breathing technique, inhaling and exhaling as much as he can. Tao stares in awe as Lloyd keeps breathing, but Lloyd realizes his barrier is hindering his breathing so he dispels it. The Lick thinks that Lloyd has reached his limit, so he decides to use the opportunity to attack him with every possible spell. Lloyd grabs onto a stalactite and he hangs from it, keeping up his breathing. The Lick's attacks are about to take Lloyd down, but he suddenly dodges all its attacks gracefully. Tao realizes that Lloyd was the one who dispelled his barrier so he could breathe in properly and build up more Kai. Lloyd combines his Kai and his mana as he keeps breathing and dodging the Lick's attacks. Lloyd is finally satisfied with his mana-Kai combination, and he's able to dispel the Lick's attacks. He's disappointed that the attack doesn't get to the Lick, so he decides to reduce the size and increase the range of his attack to make it more precise. He releases the combination strikes, but the Lick blocks it with his magic. Lloyd keeps releasing the strikes, but the Lick can continuously block the attacks. Lloyd smiles like a possessed maniac as he relishes his new experience with Kai. He's optimistic about experimenting more and having more fun, but the Lick can't believe that Lloyd is releasing so many attacks without saying any incantation. The Lick is surprised that Lloyd is using Kai even when he's a sorcerer. He's baffled that Lloyd's Kai even surpasses his sorcery. Lloyd makes his strikes sharper and thinner and in a last-ditch effort. The Lick creates a barrier to protect himself. The strike cuts through the Lick's barrier, and it takes down the Lick. A treasure chest opens after they defeat the Lick, but all they see inside is a ragged dagger. Tao thinks it's a bust, but Lloyd decides to keep the dagger because he has some residual mana. The treasure suddenly closes and sinks into the ground. Lloyd realizes that the chest is trying to escape because it's the core of the dungeon, and he grabs onto it. He figures out that the treasure chest will live underground and consume magic items, then it'll create a new dungeon. It will then absorb all the equipment dropped by the adventurers and then grow bigger. The chest will then give up everything it has collected when the dungeon has been cleared and use that chance to escape. Lloyd is fascinated by the cycle of the chest, but Tao is more concerned about their lives. Lloyd manages to pull the chest from the dungeon floor before the roof of the dungeon begins collapsing. They manage to escape the dungeon on time before it's closed fully. Tao wonders why Lloyd used Kai techniques despite being a sorcerer. She thinks Lloyd was trying to get back at the Lick for mocking her, but Lloyd tells her he was just having fun. 
Lloyd suddenly remembers Grimoire is in trouble, and he informs Tao that he needs to attend to something urgently. Tao decides to train more and become strong enough so Lloyd will find her intriguing. Lloyd flies back home, and he enters the castle through his bedroom window, wondering if Grimoire is okay. He sees Grimoire lying on the ground covered with bumps and bruises. Grimoire recalls how Silpha was so disappointed that Lloyd had gotten weaker during their training session. She chased Grimoire around, drilling him back to his former strength. Grimoire tells Lloyd he couldn't do anything against Silpha and he blames his predicament on Lloyd for coming late. Lloyd apologizes for coming late. The next day, Lloyd and Grimoire are frolicking about the castle library. Grimoire looks unimpressed at the dagger that made Lloyd return home late, leading to his misfortune. Lloyd tries to convince him that the dagger is a valuable treasure. He decides to soak the dagger in hot water and then rub off the surface. After that, he's able to peel off the mana essence on the dagger that is a catalyst for enchantment. Weapons can be enhanced by writing spells on them using the essence. Lloyd reads the mana essence of the blade, and he realizes it was enchanted with reinforced strength. Grimoire thinks Lloyd will be able to experiment with enchantments now but Lloyd tells him it's not that easy. He puts the mana essence of the blade in a flask containing water, and he uses his disassemble spell to break it down. Lloyd explains that he can't experiment because mana essence is expensive and enchantments are prone to fail. He doesn't want to lose the weapon, and it's mana essence, so he decides to analyze the mana essence and mass produce it himself. He uses a water purification spell to separate the raw materials of the blade's mana essence by increasing its purity. The essence is separated into oil, silver, and hematide. Grimoire recognizes hematide is powdered monster core, which is very rare. Lloyd informs Grimoire that he has the dungeon's treasure chest, which was its core, and he knows he can make hematide from that. They are both happy that all they need is just oil, silver, and a lot of weapons to enchant with mana essence. Lloyd goes to see his father to ask him for a favor. His father gives him a huge pouch of silver coins, wondering if he doesn't want gold coins instead. Lloyd tells him he's satisfied with silver coins, and he runs back to the library. The king realizes that Lloyd is very humble, and he wonders what he wants to use his pocket money for. Lloyd takes the silver coins to the secret library, where Grimoire helps him melt them to their liquid form. They are satisfied with the amount of silver in their possession. Later in the day, Lloyd and Silpha are engaged in the heat of training. Lloyd tries to use a sprint spell to get behind Silpha and launch a surprise attack, but she dodges it. Lloyd decides to use a morphing spell on the ground, which surprises Silpha. He's about to take her down and claim his prize when she suddenly disappears. Lloyd wonders where she is but Silpha is chillin' underneath him. She launches a surprise attack from underneath, which catches Lloyd off guard. Lloyd yields, but after the battle, Silpha still gives him a vase of oil. Lloyd wonders why she's giving him the oil when they agreed he'll only get it if he wins a round against her when they spar. Silpha tells him she doesn't mind giving him the prize because she's relieved that he isn't weak. She realizes that he was just having a bad day that day, and she's glad that her fears have been alleviated. Grimoire wonders how Silpha can still win Lloyd even when he uses magic spells against her. He concludes that she has to be a monster in disguise. Since Lloyd is already so proficient in sorcery and sword mastery, Silpha is convinced that he will become very powerful when he grows up. Lloyd takes the oils, promising to show her the results of his work. He runs back to his secret lab in the library, and with the help of Grimoire, he mixes the oil with silver and hematide to create mana essence. The next day, he goes to see Prince Albert and asks him for help with a lot of weapons to practice sorcery. Prince Albert realizes that Lloyd loves sorcery a lot and Lloyd is convinced that he'll be able to help him because he has royal guards that can lend him assistance. The guards give up their weapons and they decide to forget about them because they don't think someone as young as Lloyd can pull off enchantments successfully. Lloyd puts his replica in auto-assistant mode as he prepares to enchant the swords. He notices that Grimoire is hyped for the enchantments, and he promises to deliver an enchanted sword worthy of his anticipation. Grimoire notices that Lloyd is engraving an absurd amount of spells on the sword. Lloyd tries inscribing more spells, but the sword breaks and Lloyd realizes he overdid it. Grimoire encourages him to continue enchanting since they only just started, and after a long while, Lloyd returns to Prince Albert with his result. Prince Albert is surprised that Lloyd was able to successfully enchant 50 weapons out of 120. He apologizes for destroying the 70 swords, but he knows he was able to successfully enchant 80 swords. He overdid the enchantments on some of them, 
which made them break. Prince Albert is impressed that Lloyd could enchant so many swords because even a master enchanter only successfully enchants 10% of his weapons. The guards conclude that Lloyd is lying which pisses Silpha off, but when one guard tries to sheath his sword, it cuts through the scabbard. Lloyd tells Prince Albert he wants to see the weapons in action and Albert tells Lloyd to tag along with them because the king permitted him to go on a monster hunt. Everyone is going about their day-to-day -day activities while Prince Albert and Lloyd ride on a carriage driven by Silpha. Lloyd is sleeping off while resting his head on Albert's shoulder while Albert passes time by reading a book. After a while, Lloyd wakes up with Grimoire in his lap, while they pass by a group of farmers and Albert points them out to him. Lloyd is hyped to look around and observe the people as they go about their everyday lives. They soon leave the proximity of their town and they venture into the forest for their monster hunt. As they enter the forest, Lloyd wonders if monsters spawn within the forest frequently, but Silpha informs him that they only appear by a lake beyond the forest. Lloyd looks around the forest, excited to be part of the expedition and Silpha notices how excited he is. He tells her he's excited because he's rarely allowed to leave the castle, and he's also enthusiastic to see how enchanted swords work. Albert notices that Silpha hardly takes her eyes off Lloyd, and she thanks him for letting her take part in the expedition so she can watch over Lloyd. Albert informs her it was reasonable to let her escort them because she's Lloyd's mentor and she would be worried sick about him otherwise. She informs him she'll be worried because she's Lloyd's mentor, but Albert thinks there's another reason why she'll be worried about him. He teases her about their relationship extending beyond that of a student to a mentor and Silpha draws her sword. Albert immediately swallows his words, but Silpha informs him that they have unexpected guests. The guards escorting them realize that they're being ambushed by kobolds with steel weapons, but they figure out that the monsters are just acting as a warm-up for the real monsters. The guards decide to do their best to protect Albert, while Lloyd feigns fright of the monster, but Grimoire sees through his act. Lloyd admits that he saw them coming using spectral detection, which is one of Tao's Kai techniques. Using this technique, Lloyd is always aware of his surroundings through Kai breathing, which he admits is very useful despite being a basic Kai technique. Grimoire realizes that Lloyd is using his detection and barrier techniques 247, which makes him admit that he's getting too overpowered. Lloyd decides to pay attention to the battle as the guards engage the kobolds. The guards cut down the monsters with ease to the delight of everyone in the carriage, including the horses. Even the guards are shocked that the swords are so sharp that they cut through steel like it's butter. Lloyd is so satisfied with the result of his enchantments because the swords are so sharp, the guards have to hold them with great care so they don't hurt themselves. Albert basks in the glory of his little brother's prowess and he commends Lloyd for being such a genius. Silpha also admits that Lloyd is outstanding while standing on a mountain of fallen enemies, but Lloyd knows she used just her brute strength to take down the monster because he didn't enchant her sword. A cobbled suddenly jumps out of the forest to attack the carriage, but Tao takes it down mid-air before it can reach the carriage, to the surprise of everyone. She informs them that she came to help because she sensed the presence of monsters nearby. Lloyd suddenly calls out her name, forgetting that he's not using his disguised look right now, so he tries to hide the fact that he called her when she looks back at him. Lloyd didn't expect to run into Tao during their monster hunt, so he didn't bother with his disguise. Tao suddenly approaches him noticing that he's using Kai breathing techniques, and she confesses that she mistook him for Robert, who is his disguised self. She touches his face and a closer look at him, noticing that he looks similar to Robert. Silpha suddenly takes down a kobold that was going for Tao, and she tells Tao not to cause them more trouble after appreciating her help. She immediately tells her not to touch Lloyd so carelessly, but Tao informs her that she's not touching Lloyd carelessly. She also informs Silpha that she was aware that the monster was trying to attack her because she was using her Kai technique. Tension begins to rise between both women and Albert comes in between them to defuse the situation. He suggests they all go to the lake together so they can get to know each other better. They arrive at the lake later in the day and they set up camp by the lakeside. Albert thanks Tao for helping them arrive at the lake safely, and he introduces himself as the second prince of Saloum. Tao is surprised that he's a prince, and she apologizes for being discourteous. She's surprised that Albert looks nothing like Robert, whom she met, and she tries to look for Lloyd, who looks like Robert, but she can't find him. Lloyd is hiding behind a tent. He realized that Tao was only able to detect him because he was using spectral detection. He didn't expect Tao's senses to be so sharp, but he figured out that Tao would be suspicious of him if he suddenly decided to stop his breathing technique. He decides to enter the tent and remain silent until the monsters arrive. 
Silpha decides to spend the night with Lloyd because the guards escorting them are assigned to Albert. She informs him she's the only one who's been assigned to keep him safe, but Lloyd tries to tell her off. Silpha refused to back down because she heard rumors that a dangerous cat was roaming the area. Tao suddenly walks into their tent and she catches them in a weird position, wondering what they are doing. Silpha attacks her, but she manages to dodge just in time. They suddenly get into a word exchange and Lloyd uses this opportunity to sneak away from the tents. He can't believe the place is more stuffy than the castle even when it's outdoors. Albert teases Lloyd about being a playboy because Silpha changed a lot after she was assigned to him. Silpha wonders how Tao found them, and Tao informs her that she detected monsters around but Silpha doesn't believe her. Albert informs Lloyd that Silpha sees him as a man which Grimoire is hyped about, but Albert warns Lloyd to be careful of his relationship with women because it can get very scary. Tao and Silpha are still having a face-off with the guard acting as spectators. They suddenly beat up the guard and Lloyd agrees with Albert that women can be scary. Tao informs Silpha that she was charged with repairing a chapel on a hill across from them, and Silpha tells her she can go ahead with her task. Albert tells her not to go alone because it could be dangerous and her skill could come in handy. He suggests she helps them keep watch through the night, but a bear wolf suddenly appears and she tells him there's no need for her to keep watch anymore. The guards decide to keep their distance from the monster and find an opening to attack. Silpha tells Lloyd to stay behind her as the bear wolf prepares to attack and Lloyd complies. The bear wolf tries to attack one of the guards, but he barely moves away to avoid the attack. Lloyd notices that the wolf moves fast despite its size, and he asks Grimoire about his opinion of the wolf. He notices that Grimoire isn't responding properly, and he wonders what is wrong. Grimoire is wondering if he recognized the rundown chapel Tao was asked to fix. The wolf tries to chase down a guard, but Tao uses her Kai strike to knock it down and save the guard's life. The guard thanks her for this, but the wolf gets back to its feet and resumes its attack. Tao can't believe the wolf is this tough, but Albert decides to draw out his enchanted sword to put down the wolf for good because he doesn't want it to hurt people in the nearby village. He uses the enchantment of the sword to cast a fireball at the wolf, which burns it to a crisp. The guards are hyped that Albert was able to take down the wolf with one strike, but he informs them that his spell was enhanced by Lloyd's enchantment. He praises Lloyd once again for being a genius and Lloyd is glad that his enchantment on Albert's sword was a success. Grimoire remembers that the chapel on the hill was used to imprison a demon and Lloyd is intrigued by this. The slain bear wolf suddenly gets back to its feet, to the surprise of everyone. Albert notices several monsters appear around the wolf and he wonders where they came from. Pazuzu the demon emerges from the monster's mouth, pissed that they were able to take down his kin. He's surprised that mere humans are so arrogant, and he tells them the only way they can pay for their arrogance is with their lives. He orders the monster to attack them, and they rush at Albert. He tries to use his sword to take down the monster, but they heal up any time he lands an attack on them. Albert is surprised by this that he doesn't know what to do but Tao comes to his aid after realizing the wolves can heal. She realizes that they are in a bad situation because of the regenerative powers of the monsters. Albert informs her that he's never faced monsters like this, and he notices that some of them are hybrids. He figures out that the monsters could be manipulated by the monster's power. Lloyd realizes that the demon broke free from its seal in the church, and he wonders if he's Grimoire's acquaintance. Grimoire tells Lloyd that he doesn't know the demon, but informs him that the demon is controlling the other weapons by transmuting mana to them. He informs Lloyd that the demon controls the demons by infusing his mana into them, which also accelerates their regeneration. He tells Lloyd they need to defeat the demon first, or they'll keep fighting an unending battle, but Lloyd is more interested in learning how to transmute mana. Grimoire is surprised by Lloyd's sudden request, and he informs him that it may not be the right time for him to learn such a technique because everyone is fighting for their lives. Silpha stands aside, mocking Tao for not being able to take down the monsters, but Tao scolds her for doing nothing about the monsters. Lloyd forces him to teach him the technique while the monster gloats about how weak the humans are. The monster mocks Lloyd for getting scared and hiding behind a barrel. He also laughs at Silpha for babysitting such a weakling, and this pisses Silpha off. She takes permission to leave Lloyd alone, and she approaches the demon who's excited to make her one of his kin. Silpha passes up on his offer, and she tells him he's stinking up the place so bad that Lloyd is now breathing in polluted air. She decides to put an end to his life, but the monster tries to convince her she's fighting a losing battle because he can regenerate his monsters as long as he keeps fueling them with mana. The demon thinks she'll start begging, and he advises her to save her breath, 
but she tells him he should be the one saving his breath because it stinks a lot. The demon is so pissed by this that he lashes out at her, but she dismembers the monster housing the demon. The demon starts to regenerate his house monster with his mana, and the others notice that the other monsters aren't as fast or regenerative as they were previously. Albert notices that the demon is focused on healing himself, and he figures out that their best chance of winning is to wear down the monster. He orders Silpha to deal as much damage to the demon as she can manage so the others have a chance to take down the monsters. Grimoire continues with his lesson on mana transmutation with Lloyd. He informs Lloyd that it's not easy to master the technique because it takes years for even demons to master it. He tells Lloyd to start by changing the color of his mana and then its shape and smell. Lloyd uses his mana to create a flower with its distinct smell and Grimoire can't believe he was able to perfect the technique in such a short time. Meanwhile, Silpha is dealing with the demon, but she decides to borrow an enchanted sword from one of the guards. The demon can't see any gaps in Silpha's defense, and he wonders why someone so strong would choose to be a babysitter. Silpha gets a feel of an enchanted sword, and she's so happy that Lloyd has grown so much, but the demon decides to go after Lloyd once he finishes Silpha off. He attacks Silpha and successfully consumes her, after realizing that humans show weakness once they're emotional. Silpha suddenly starts cutting him in half after he makes such a condescending statement. Silpha uses a secret Langris technique to tear the demon apart to everyone's surprise. The demon falls out of its housing monster and Silpha sees his disgusting its internal look. Lloyd realizes that Silpha is on a completely different level when she's angry. She informs the demon he can't lay a finger on Lloyd because the only thing he'll ever get close to is her blade. Silpha tells Pazuzu to give up because she has taken him down, but he only laughs at her naive brazenness. He suddenly starts releasing poisonous mana from its mouth, which engulfs the area around them, depriving Silpha of her vision. Meanwhile, the knights take down the monsters and they rejoice in their victory, but Albert reminds them that the monsters will regenerate unless they defeat the demon. They are suddenly engulfed by the mana, and they lose their consciousness. Tao is quick to prevent herself from inhaling the mana, but Silpha isn't so lucky as she falls to her knees in front of Pazuzu. Pazuzu is pissed that they took down the monsters he's been using his time to raise since he broke out of the church's seal a hundred years ago. He suddenly attacks Silpha which sends her flying into a nearby, and though Albert wants to help her, he can do nothing but claw helplessly at the forest floor. He wonders why he can't move at all as the demon informs Silpha that anyone who breathes in his mana of domination will fall under his control. Silpha now understands why the air was smelling so bad, but Pazuzu tries to attack her because her comment pissed him off. Tao comes in just in time to block his attack, and she stands in front of Silpha to protect her from him. Tao wonders if Silpha can stand but Silpha informs her that she doesn't need her help while shivering like a wet dog that just got out of the rain. She tries to act tough to Tao but Tao can see through her ruse. She tells her to run away if she can move but Silpha begs her to take Lloyd and run for her life as she sinks into the lake. Pazuzu commends Silpha for being strong because though she was the closest to him when he released his mana, she still fought furiously. Pazuzu suddenly moves faster than Tao can react coming up from her back and wondering why she's not feeling the effect of his mana. Tao tries to hit him, but he dodges her attack flawlessly, catches her leg and counters. He then realizes that she's breathing in a special way which prevents her from absorbing his mana. While Pazuzu is holding on to Tao, she becomes distressed to the point that she begins losing her breath rhythm. Pazuzu tells her she should take taken her opportunity to run away, but he wonders if he's so enticing that she wants to join his kin. The thought of this makes Tao lash out because she couldn't imagine herself joining with something so otherworldly ugly. She informs the demon that she's finally found a hottie and she wouldn't be leaving him to his mercy as she channels her Kai to land a huge electro attack on Pazuzu. Tao realizes that it was a mistake to use such a huge attack, but she decides to get her breathing in order so she can continue attacking. But before she can recover, the monsters regenerate and begin attacking her. Pazuzu wondered who she was calling a hottie because, from his point of view, he could only see useless thrash sprawled on the ground. He tries to convince her that his kin are hotter than her hottie because they can regenerate no matter the damage they take. Pazuzu releases more of his mana to try to get Tao to join his kin and devote her life to him, but she tells him that she can feel someone close to her which gives her hope. The demon wonders who she's talking about and she informs him that she's referring to her hottie who's going to take him down. 
Pazuzu spits in disgust, but he loses interest in Tao because she's just an ordinary human and he decides to punish Silpha for her impudence. He wants to corrupt Silpha to make up for his lost kin and though he knows it will take time, he knows it would be worth it in the end. While he was contemplating how he'd bathe Silpha in his mana and make her his eternal slave, Lloyd realized that's how he'd been controlling the bear wolves. He informs Lloyd that he took down the wolf's parents and engulfed them in his mana to make them think he's their real parent without them realizing his atrocity. Lloyd can't believe his ear, but Pazuzu suddenly realizes that he's walking in his mana unscathed and he wonders how he's doing it. Lloyd tells him he has no idea how he's doing it, but Pazuzu tells him he must have an idea because no one can walk through his mana normally like that. He suddenly notices Grimoire standing by Lloyd's side, and he wonders why a demon is protecting a human because he's never seen a demon protecting a human before. He starts making fun of Grimoire's appearance because he's a disgrace to demon kind, but Grimoire gets pissed because the demon doesn't know who he's dealing with. He thinks about giving Pazuzu some advice, but he reconsiders so Pazuzu can have first-hand experience. Pazuzu sends his kin to Lloyd and Lloyd realizes this is the perfect opportunity to try mana transformation because there are a lot of monsters around. Lloyd realizes that he'll need a lot of mana for that, and though he knows he's not very good at controlling his mana, he decides to channel enough mana and go for something warm and peaceful. The bear wolves are hypnotized by Lloyd's mana and he's able to seize control of them from Pazuzu. He's amazed that he was able to pull it off, then he tells one of the bear wolves who consumed Tao to spit her out. Pazuzu concludes that Lloyd is an expert sorcerer because he was able to create a field of flowers in just an instant. He releases more mana trying to take control of the bear wolves again, but Grimoire informs him that they now know how he manipulated them from birth. The monsters rush at Pazuzu, attacking him and freeing Silpha from his grasp. Lloyd is amazed by how coordinated and powerful the bear wolves move when they're led properly. Pazuzu gets even pissed, and he takes down the bear wolves for daring to bite the hand that fed them, though the same hands deprived them of their parents. Pazuzu informs Lloyd that his magic can never match that of a demon, no matter the magic he may be using. This statement makes Lloyd remember when Grimoire said the same thing because demons can't be taken down permanently by magic. Pazuzu decides to release his full power since he's not sharing his mana with the monsters again. Lloyd is wondering why demons have never been taken down with magic, and he's enthusiastic about finding out how much magic a demon can handle before it goes down. Lloyd releases his mana and Pazuzu is dumbfounded by what is standing before his eyes. Grimoire can see that Pazuzu now understands why his mana doesn't work on Lloyd because there's no gap to exploit. Lloyd thanks the demon for allowing him to test out an array of spells to his detriment. Pazuzu does his best to wake up because he thinks he's in a nightmare. Lloyd suddenly tries to cast a barrier around him, but he moves in time to prevent that. Wondering when Lloyd said the incantation to cast the barrier, Pazuzu realizes that he's running out of options and he decides to run for his life. He figured out that Lloyd wasn't trying to fight him, instead, he wanted to cage him and turn him into a lab rat. Pazuzu keeps flying as he dodges Lloyd's barriers and he begs Lloyd to stop trying to capture him. Pazuzu tries to catch his breath behind a rock, but Lloyd casts another barrier that he barely escapes in time. Grimoire wonders how many barriers Lloyd can cast at a time, and Lloyd informs him he can cast 10 at once, including the ones on standby. He informs Grimoire he can increase the number if Grimoire joins him and Grimoire gets absorbed. Lloyd starts casting more barriers and Pazuzu barely dodges him. He keeps dodging desperately and he flies around, looking for an opening to get away, but he's getting frustrated, wondering how Lloyd can cast so many spells at once. His ego overtakes his fight or flight response and he can't help but praise himself for dodging all the barriers Lloyd put up. He's in the middle of healing praises on himself when Lloyd catches him in a dimensional enclosure. Pazuzu tries to break out of the enclosure, wondering if Lloyd will use him for experimentation, but Lloyd reminds him that he said magic won't work on him. Lloyd also figured out that he experimented with the bear wolves and mixed them with other monsters because they look different, which pissed him off. Lloyd tells him he has no right to complain after the atrocities he committed on the monster, and he activates a serial spell casting technique. Pazuzu gets desperate as Lloyd comes closer and promises to share whatever he wants with him when he eventually rules the world. Pazuzu confesses that he may lose his life because he's never been hit with magic by someone as powerful as him. 
Lloyd casts the highest magic combination of the four natural elements using rapid activation to cast it three times faster than normal. Pazuzu begs Lloyd to hold back so they can discuss man to demon, but Lloyd isn't paying him any attention at all. He releases the spell inside the barrier, amazed that he's able to release 240 spells per minute. He decides to keep the spell active for 30 minutes because the combination is too beautiful to behold. After some time, Lloyd calls out to Pazuzu, but he doesn't get a response which makes him fear that Pazuzu has indeed lost his life. Lloyd is disappointed because Pazuzu wasn't able to withstand his spells for even five minutes. Grimoire informs Lloyd that demons aren't fully immune to magic. Instead, they have a high resistance to it, but when hit with a barrage of magic, they'll fall to it. Pazuzu is sad that his legacy came crashing down instantly despite his hundreds of years of preparation as he withers away. Pazuzu and Lloyd cross eyes for a minute, but Lloyd realizes that everyone is waking up, so he decides to run off to cover his tracks. While Lloyd rejoins the rest of the group, Grimoire informs Pazuzu that it's more fun to follow someone who enjoys everything rather than someone who keeps spouting about their suffering. Grimoire is glad that Lloyd is passionate about what he's doing, but he quickly excludes himself, informing Pazuzu that he's just saving his strength so he can one day win a rematch against Lloyd. Pazuzu leaves his ambitions to Grimoire as he fades away and Grimoire absorbs him to gain back some of his power. Grimoire is hyped that he has a chance of winning his rematch against Lloyd. Meanwhile, Lloyd lies to everyone that Robert came to defeat the demon, and Tao looks around desperately just to catch a glimpse of him. Grimoire concludes that he still has a long way to go before he matches Lloyd's abilities. They return to the castle, and the king commends Albert for defeating the demon and all its monsters, but he cautions him that it was careless of him to go on the expedition with just his guards. Albert apologizes for his oversight, and the king asks him about the adventurers that lent him a hand. Albert informs the king that Robert disappeared before they regained consciousness, while Tao ran off in search of the love of her life. The king was intrigued by Robert's abilities because he protected them, but Albert informs the king that Lloyd was very vital to the success of the expedition. He suggests that Lloyd be allowed to contest for the throne because it was thanks to his weapons that they didn't fall to the horde of monsters. He tells the king that Lloyd's attributes are befitting a king, and the king informs him that he's indirectly adding more competition to the throne. Albert informs the king that he'll gladly give up the throne for someone more fitting for the betterment of the kingdom. He tells the king it would be unfair to exclude Lloyd, though he's so young, but he warns Lloyd that he has no intention of losing to him. The king asks Lloyd if he would like to contest for the throne and Lloyd declines without emotion. Lloyd is out in the courtyard playing with one of the bear wolves who followed them home while the others return to the forest. Grimoire gets jealous of how close Lloyd is to the bear wolf, so he decides to fluff himself up so Lloyd can pet him as well. Grimoire informs him that the bear wolves won't cause trouble since his magic has settled. Lloyd realizes that he's still linked to the bear wolves, but Silpha suddenly walks in, and he hurriedly hides Grimoire in the bear wolf's fur. He informs her that he's named the bear wolf Shiro, but he informs her that he doesn't know how to go about teaching Shiro some things. Silpha informs him that he can use magic to instruct monsters, and he decides to give it a try. Grimoire realizes that Lloyd is only interested in magic after he hurriedly turned down a shot at the throne. The king thinks Lloyd is humble for doing that, but Albert informs him that Lloyd may be destined for things outside their little kingdom. The king was hyped to see what Lloyd would achieve in the future. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.